It is 5.30 and we'd like to welcome you to the February meeting 2024 of the Fannin County School Board. I want to welcome all of you that are in attendance as well as those online. And uh, Madam Superintendent, we'll turn it over to you. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today, God. We uh, thank the opportunity to come to you in prayer this evening, God, and to know that you listen and uh, you answer our prayer, God. Uh, thank you for the many blessings that you pour out on each and every one of us every day, God. Uh, you're so good to us. Help us all to uh, do our best to live for you each and every day. I thank you for the school system, God, and uh, for all those gathered here this evening. I pray for each of our board members, God, this evening. Thank you uh, for their uh, willingness to uh, serve God, and uh, I just pray that you give them the wisdom and the knowledge for every decision they have to make, God. I thank you that they are uh, godly men, and they seek to serve you in their lives, God. What a blessing it is to be a part of the Fannin County School System, God. Uh, you put us all here for a reason. I pray for all of our teachers and staff and uh, all of our precious students, God, that you've allowed us to be a part of their lives. Bless us, we pray, God. We'll be quick to give you all the praise, honor, and glory for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Thank you. If you would please remain standing while Deputy Tony Scariani comes forward and lands in the second place. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to approve the consent agenda as presented. Board, we have a recommendation. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Vote is unanimous. Board, if it's all right with you all, I'd like to have a 
um, we all take a photo with them if they'd like to invite their family and the principal forward as well. Teacher 
and not new to our staff, but welcoming back Ms. Millie Rice as interim assistant principal. She never even hesitated, it was awesome. And then Michelle Fox is filling in as academic coach. So we certainly are honored and welcoming all of those. Our staff continues to build on professional learning as they're working on integrating STEM and SEAM. We had the opportunity for several staff members to participate in Adopt a Stream at Fayette County Middle School, so we appreciate them for um, collaborating with us to get that in works. And then Ms. Mitchell up there in the corner, she's working on her beekeeping skills, so she just ordered new bees today, so we're going to see how that goes. In October, we were able to do our STEM kickoff. That was an amazing event. We usually do that in October or early fall, and that's an opportunity for all of our parents to come out and be engaged in our year-long projects or project-based learning opportunities that our teachers are engaged in. They work on cleaning out the pollinator park, um, creating sculptures out of recycled goods for the frog bog, and just many different things to, that we can work with parents on. We know that for kids to be engaged at school, we all have to also make sure that we're letting them have fun. And so we always participate in Red Ribbon Week. I'm not quite certain that our students always understand the purpose of Red Ribbon Week as we try to make them aware of being drug free, but still they enjoy participating in the event. And I think this year the one that I liked most was the dress like someone that inspires you. And to see all of our students that came in dressed as teachers or one even dressed as Officer Tony um, when they came in that morning. That says a lot about our staff when our children are choosing to dress like them. Um, we are happy to announce that our West Haven News Crew is officially up and running. We were able to purchase that um, media equipment last year with SWAS funds. And then we have added a new yearbook staff that meets on Wednesdays and Thursdays. That's our fourth and fifth grade students that wanted to participate because we think it would be great for them to be able to put a special input into what the yearbook is and just let them with some photography skills and things such as that. Continue to collaborate with the middle school and the high school. Our fifth grade traveled to the FCHS CTAE where they were allowed to explore um, auto mechanics, uh, Rebel TV, welding, and looks like some CPR and first aid. And I think that this is an excellent opportunity because so many of our students, that's what really drives them to want to continue is that they see that they're going to be capable to do those things as they move along. Um, the FCHS Key Club also came out to West Penn and worked with our students just to help build Christmas ornaments and read books to them right before Christmas. And they just love spending time with those high school kids because it's somebody that they can look up to. Our pre-K had pre-K week, and we were honored with lots of community guests. We had Miss Diller and Dr. Ruth, Miss Hug, Doctor or Miss Hug. We had um, Tri-State EMC again, Mr. Siriani and um, Heath Stanley from the fire department. So we are thankful that they were able to come out and share with our pre-K kids. If you ever need or have an adult moment, you just have to go pre-K and they'll lift your spirits. We have learned that it's always a way to a person's heart or can be encouraging if you lead them to food. And so our first graders were learning about graphing and they were tasting their favorite desserts and then they had to graph which one was their favorite. Our kindergartners took um, their trip to Johnny Appleseed and learned about apples and then brought the apples back and made applesauce. And our fifth grade were using our Charlie cart and were making sweet potato cornbread to go along with one of the books that they were studying in literature. So just ways that we continue to encourage the kids and give them some life skills as well. December was jam-packed with fun. Again, kids love to dress up, so we have 12 days of Christmas. Our teachers really went above and beyond this year. If you can see in the gym, we had some Christmas light bowling, and the kids absolutely loved that. We had a scavenger hunt in the media center, and their prizes and just the things that they dressed up were amazing. Continuing with that student recognition, we had our spelling bee champ 
um, for the school, which was Mr. Connor Griffin, and then our cyber security posters as well. And can't go without mentioning all the students that made it to the spelling bee at the school because, again, just as Ms. Dillard had said earlier, spelling is definitely not my forte, so kudos to them. We continue to um, honor and recognize those students that are putting forth the second step character words of the month, and that's um, assertiveness, compassion, and empathy are the ones that we have really focused on the last few months. And then just giving them the opportunity to participate for prizes for school lunch week, encouraging them to eat school lunch. As always, Veterans Day is one of our favorite events that we have for the year. Um, it's just such an honor to be able to give back to those that have given so much to us. It's always one of those tear-jerky days that many people can't hold back their emotions, but within reason, and we understand why. And what a great opportunity for it is for our kids to be able to see and recognize that some of their family has served in those roles. So we appreciate our veterans. An additional club we started this year is Trailblazers, um, the outdoor club. They have participated in several hiking events at Project Chimps. Ms. Butner, Greta Butner, is heading that up, and she has taken them just about everywhere. Um, they go on Saturday mornings sometimes. And we have a special shout-out to the Chamber of Commerce and Project Chimps as they all created first aid, bag, first aid bags to travel when they go hiking. <coughs> the Sons of the Revolution have been big components at West Bannon this year. They came and called us and asked if we were interested in planting a liberty tree. Um, this is a tree that became popular, a popular meeting place for men who advocated for the rights of colonists in honor of their 250th anniversary. They wanted to plant a tree, so we said, okay, of course. So we put it out on the playground, and we hope that that will be a meeting place for our students as it's right along the walking path. They also came out a little later and shared some of the artifacts that they have from the different battles, and we just appreciate them coming out and continuing to instill that history in our students. Trunk Retreat is always a fun event. It blows my mind every year at how involved and engaged our parents get with this and where their creative skills come in. This year, they went above and beyond um, I don't even think I have it on here, but we had Sandy Cheeks from Spongebob, and it was hilarious. Um, just great, and the kids absolutely loved it. This year we had to do two parking lots because there were so many people that came out for the event. The next slide is our Thanksgiving meals. This is just a small sample, um, screenshots from the cameras of how many people went through West Bend on the two days that we did for Thanksgiving meals. It was absolutely amazing, but one of our favorites is we get to engage with all of those parents. White Christmas is always a pleasant surprise this year. We added a little task to that as Ms. Jennifer Danner added the realm of the student art on the screen as they were performing, so that was nice for the parents to be able to see as well. Continuing to engage our parents, we have Power Hour for each grade level where we can work to build relationships with them, discuss attendance with them, and curriculum. They come and eat dinner or come and eat lunch with their students, and then they come spend about 30 minutes with us and the teachers so that we can let them know what's going on in the classroom. Shout out to our PTO as they continue to build and engage our parents with donuts with dads and muffins with mom. Our PTO is killing it with this event. I think they do it twice a month. So, again, PTO is just rocking it out. We have our Student of Secret Shop, one of our biggest events. If you ever see any of our PTO staff, at, at, right after Christmas, they are knocking down the doors at the Dollar Tree and finding all the sales that they can because to watch the kids come in and shop is amazing. But I think it's even better to watch their parents' faces when they see some of the unique gifts that they get on Christmas morning. Um, and then we have, they started a store, i go back up a minute, Heather, I'm sorry. Um, they started a store so kids can buy supplies, and they also did the West Fan and Giving Tree. This is something they came up with last year, but teachers can put things on the Giving Tree, and then parents can pick it off, and they provide the teachers with something they may have wished for for Christmas. So that's an excellent um, 
reach out for everybody to participate in. Our family movie night was a great hit. This year it was a little interesting because it was raining. Um, it was a little different, right, Mr. Drew, to try to get that projector up and running as this was the first year that we had actually put that up. Um, it was all new staff putting that up, so it was fun. But it went well and we had a big participation. And finally, this was just last week, last Tuesday night, we had bingo night at West Penn. It was really not even a planned event. Um, it's just something that Miss Amy Curtis wanted to do. We had over 300 people show up to West Penn to participate in bingo night. Um, I think that goes a lot to say about where we are at West Hannon and what our culture has become. If you see the top picture, we have like a chain. That is a blessing chain that was made, or a thankfulness chain that was made by our students in November um, by one of our staff members that just thought that it would be really good for students to truly understand what they're thankful for. And it literally lined all the way down the hallway um, at West Hannon. And then when you're having your worst days, you always know that your kids are first and foremost. So the past several months at West Hannon have been very trying. We've had lots of deaths on staff of family members. But our students always lift us up. And so one Friday we come in, and this was hanging in my door by two of our fifth grade students. And it simply says, best school ever. You know, even on your worst day, you can leave it up to your kids to make it right. And so that's why you see some of the little hashtags, West Van Family, West Van Strong and Stronger Together, because if nothing else, that's what we have lived for the last few months. And West Van has become more than a school. It has truly become a family. So thank you. I have a comment for you. That donuts with dads thing, that uh, I get more comments on that. But the other day, this is important for you to know, the other day I saw a little boy who doesn't have a dad. And I seen with this other gentleman all the time, and he says, I want you to go with me for donuts and dads. So the little boy didn't have one, he fell out, but this gentleman went with him for donuts and dads. And I saw him later, and he couldn't stop talking about it, you know. So it's a tremendous thing that y'all are doing with that. And, um, well, and we found with that that one of the reasons we have it first thing in the mornings is you hate to ask parents if they can get off work early and get to come to an event. And by the time they get home in the evening, they're exhausted. But if you can get them right before they go to work, most of the time they'll stop. Mm -hmm. So, and we really can't trick Joey Brazenia is the one that came up with that idea, right. and it's just kind of rolled and it's built and it's been amazing. So yes, it is. Good. Any more comments? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next time I'm on the agenda is Central Office Update, and I'd like to invite Director of Finance Susan Wynn forward to share the, um, with the board an update on the FY23 audit. Good evening, Madam Superintendent, board. It's my pleasure this evening to discuss our annual financial report for fiscal year into June 30th, 2023, and our FY23 audit, which has now been completed and is published on the Georgia Department of Audit's website, along with the website on our district uh, financial um, tab. So let me show you where you can go if you want to find it under ours. If you go under departments and find it. Then we can scroll down and you'll see annual financial reports. So we have our financial reports from 2018 all the way through 2023. Those are all of our audited reports. We have our schedule of approved local option sales tax project from 2019 <coughs> through 23. And then we can scroll up and see our current uh, tax digest for all of the years that we've got published from 19 through 23. Our adopted budgets from Two through 24. We also appear at budget meetings. This is where we will advertise when we set our budget meetings for 25. And when we have our 25 proposed budget, that is also where it will be posted as well as being advertised in the newspaper. So, um, to continue, let me begin before we start 
to start talking about our financial statements and go ahead and give you some great news that we received an unmodified opinion on our financial statement, which is the best opinion that you can receive. We had no findings. We had no financial statement findings or federal award findings or questioned cost. There was no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies identified in our financial statements or in any major programs. And it is my pleasure to say that this is my fifth year having the honor and privilege to prepare our financial statements for audit and that we will receive the award of distinction for excellent financial reporting for the fifth year in a row. The award is a distinction that is presented to organizations that submit quality financial statements and supporting documentation in a timely manner, whose annual financial report is given an unmodified audit opinion and is free of any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses and complies with all transparency and government act requirements. Colleague, that has to be approaching the numerical standard. Yes, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So they perform our audit in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards and governmental auditing standards, which require them to exercise professional judgment and maintain professional skepticism throughout the audit. They identify and assess the risk of material misstatement of the financial statements. They design and perform audit procedures responsive to those risks and obtain an understanding of our internal control relevant to the audit in order to design the audit procedures that are appropriate in the circumstances, but not for the purpose of expressing an opinion on the effectiveness of our school district's internal control. The auditors do not express an opinion on our internal control. They evaluate the appropriateness of accounting policies that we use and the reasonableness of significant accounting estimates that we make, as well as they evaluate the overall presentation of our financial statement. And they conclude in their judgment that our conditions are at the end, considered in the aggregate, that a grave substantial doubt of the school district's ability to continue its ongoing concern. So they have to do that for all districts to make sure that every district is very well fit, financially stable. And then they have required supplemental information. The accounting principles generally accepted in the United States of America require the management's discussion and analysis and required supplementary information listed in the table of contents be presented to supplement the basic financial statements. So such information is the responsibility of management. And although not a part of the basic financial statements, it's required by governmental accounting standards court who considers it to be an essential part of our financial reporting for placing the basic financial statements in appropriate operational, economic, and historical content. The auditors have applied limited procedures to the required supplementary information and do not express an opinion or provide any assurance on the information because of the limited procedures. Then we have supplementary information, which the audit was conducted for the purpose of forming opinions on the financial statements that collectively comprise the school district's basic financial statements. The accompanying supplementary information as listed in the table of contents is presented for the purposes of additional analysis and not a required part of the basic financial statements. The schedule of expenditures of federal awards is presented for the purpose of additional analysis as required by Title II of the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations, Part 200, Uniform Administrative Requirements, Cost Principles, and Audit Requirements for federal awards, and is also not a required part of the basic financial statements. So then last we have other reporting required by governmental auditing standards. And then the auditors also issue a report dated January 26, 24, on their consideration of the school district's internal control over financial reporting and on their test of our compliance with certain provisions, laws, regulations, contracts, and agreements, and other matters. So that concludes the explanation of the independent auditor's report. That's the most as far as going through. So now we can actually move through and kind of discuss a little bit of the statements. So we've got the management's discussion and analysis, which is a required supplementary information. So it provides key highlights of what's going on throughout the year. One key highlight is the transfer of our property to the Bannock County Board of Commissioners for the new library. And then it also explains our annual report that it consists of three parts, the management's discussion and analysis, the basic financial statements, the supplementary information. The basic financial statements includes two levels of statements that present different views of the school district. These include the government-wide and the fund financial statements. The government-wide statements are full accrual-based statements, which includes the statement of net position and statement of activities. The fund financial statements focuses on individual parts reporting the school district's operation in more detail. Yet the fund financial statements are presented on a modified accrual basis. So we can scroll through now and look at the different, there's different tables presented in the management's discussion and analysis. We can go on down to figure A, which shows our revenue for fiscal year 2023. And the management's discussion and analysis is almost like cliff notes of a book. So there's figure A. It shows our total revenues for FY 2023. 
that closing thing and and in uh, although it may be boring uh somewhat to go through that <clears throat> you know here but the guy i've never seen the guy on it yet and, and laugh so much he was so happy to be uh a part of this this audit so uh, that was pretty exciting for me just to see the guy normally when people are looking at your money they look pretty solemn but he was he was excited that it came out that way
Folks, finish editing signs in front of our schools. Now, I know there's, there's logical reason and there's good judgment. My children warned me against this. They said there is a good reason. <clears throat> Just suppose somebody told you about uh, critical, critical Creek Hall Church. <coughs> We've got to go down there, visit the friendly folks, you know, fellowship hall, we got beaches outside, the grounds are beautiful, clean, got a good place for your kids to play. You wait around a few weeks and finally you get the opportunity and you mow down down, drive up in the yard, get out, go in, look down and right beside the front door. There's a big sign that says, no trespassing. That's how I feel when I see those big signs in front of me. Of all places in the world, no trespassing sign to be in Fannin County. We are the opposite of no trespassing. We have the best school system on earth. We organize. We have the best schools. Our grounds are cared for well. We offer opportunities to go to the school. And I think that we are the friendliest people in the world. So, I believe our to provide the best education, the best possible cleanliness, proper safety. The personnel are friendly. They're open and quick to help and make people feel welcome. People move here from the land all over other parts of the country. Some of you can call it our school system. And once again, they have their face. Well, that's my, that's my second. Just suppose. Just suppose a young couple is successful in Florida. They get rich and they decide they move and they hear about Fan Camp. They load up their little wagon, put all their money off in the car and bring their five kids for six cars, two boats, come to Fan County, buy a house. The mom takes the kids to school the first day and she says when she gets home, John, with tears in her eyes. There was a sign in the that said, no trespassing. For those of you who are concerned, I do have heart with me. Uh, I am scared to death, but I'm not a Marine, but I'm Army, so you don't have to be concerned. I will not. I promise I won't fall. Okay, board policy PCBE C says that the public is invited to speak at a time set for public participation at each monthly you know, meetings and at other call me call meetings according to the each of the school system. Policy BCBI says all presentations to the board, which is what I'm doing now as a citizen, are to be brief and intended for the for the board to hear comments and concerns with no action taken. <coughs> According to the Open Meetings Act, according to the Open Board of Education, according to the Open Meetings Act, the local Board of Education must act on a, as a body, a group, together, in an organized meeting with the public present to act to vote, except for executive session. And so, Mr. Chair, I ask that the discussion for the no trespassing signs be put on the agenda next month for the purpose of discussion for the public and the board. Thank you for hearing.
excited about this request. Our old greenhouse at the high school. It's time to put it to good use, hopefully for somebody else. Now that we've got our greenhouse operational at the ag facility, I would like to request that the existing old greenhouse at the high school be declared surplus for the entire structure. And then there are 18 4 by 10 metal tables. Go ahead, Ms. Collins. So I've got some pictures in there. Again, here's all the ads that we have to do legally. So all that's that information. And there's some pictures in there as well. So again, that's everything that you see for the facility inside and out. And then the tables are at the very last picture. There's a couple of them. I've got to zoom in on one of the tables. And while we're putting those for surplus, we've actually got over, I think it was 24 total tables. And they are keeping six of those. And put those also at the new greenhouse, which also has two tables in it. Again, that is the 18 tables there that we're going to sell, hopefully individually, if the board approves this as surplus. Well, is this the same one already? No, sir. It'll be whoever bids on it can come and dismantle it. Mr. Chair, make recommendations to approve surplus property as presented. Second. 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 Board, we have a recommendation. Do I hear a motion? So moved. I have a motion. Is there a second? You have a second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Majority? Thank you. Next item on the agenda is to approve district financial report. And I'd like to invite Ms. Wynn back up to present that information. Thank you. So we have our December 31st financial statements for our general fund here. You can see we are at 50% complete for the year. And it shows our encumbrances. And we can continue on to our capital projects. And it shows our revenue expenditures and our special revenues. And our school nutrition. That's our financial statements for this year. Excellent. Mr. Chair, make a recommendation to approve as presented. There's a recommendation. Do I have a motion? You have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Excellent. Next item on the agenda is to approve school quarterly financial reports. Ms. Wynn? So we have our school quarterly financial reports. We ask from July the 1st of our fiscal year through December 31st. And so we have blue ridge here. And then we have East Van. And then we have West Van. And then we have Van Middle School. And then we have Van High School. And then we have Van High School CTA. And that presents our school quarterly financial reports. Ms. Wynn, Mr. Chair, make a recommendation to approve as presented. Yes. We have a recommendation. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve as presented. Is there a second? Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is SWOT update. Ms. Wynn? So our SWOT update, we received $940,257.53 for December. We received that in January, but that was for sales tax collected during the month of December. We are still on track for finishing this lost in September 2024. And our average is $837,823.19 for the last 33 months. Thank you, Ms. Wynn, for that information. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is career technical and agricultural education. We call it TTAE. Property 
transformation in and that we really call it plain and present the transformation. That's great. Good evening again. Is this is something that the uh, state of Georgia is uh, uh, encouraged us to do now. A uh, CTA month is February, and don't worry, we're not going to read through all the whereas. Uh, don't don't worry. Um, but this is something that we are encouraged to do. And so, Ms. Dillard and I thought about it. You know, do we want to do this at our board meeting? And we came to the conclusion, yes. Um, so, Ms. Cox, you'll scroll down really quickly. So let's read this bottom part. And um, first reason is to make it public, make it known that CJE month in Fannin County uh, is this month. And we urge all citizens to become familiar with the services and benefits offered by the CJE programs in this community. And to support and participate in these programs to enhance individual skills and productivity. So that's one thing, just to make it public, make that known. Now, in, in April, at the April board meeting, we will have all of our uh, career and technical student organization uh, students that have succeeded and are going to go on to succeed in the future. They'll be here with us at that April meeting, and we'll have more and more details about all the different things that we've accomplished over the years with CTAD. In June, we'll also have CTAD updates because that's when that time comes. But we wanted one of the main reasons I wanted to stand here also and do this proclamation is to thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank all five of you for your for how you advocate for CTAE and for your passion for it. Because you know that our kids need it, and we, we've uh, we've accomplished a lot. And I thank all five of you for that from the bottom of my heart. So thank you. Yes, this is just uh, uh, no, no major details here. Uh, again, thank you, gentlemen, for taking the self-assessment. Uh, this is something that, that our board members uh, have to take uh, every year in order to remain an exemplary board. But it's not just something that's compliance. It's something really, really good for the board members to do, to truly take time to reflect on, on uh, different aspects of what it means to be a board member. And so, again, thank you, gentlemen, for taking your time to, to take part in that and do that. Hey, Dr. Reed. Mr. Chair, I do believe next item on the agenda, he's going to give us an update on local board training. So, two things there. Um, first thing is kind of moving in from the self assessment. One of the other items that we'll be taking care of over the next month has to do with an internal board review team. We do that every year. And that will involve our chair and our, and our vice chair along with some community members. So that's uh, coming up. And then also on February 27th, we will have our local board training and we'll have the ability to go into our elementary schools. And we'll also have a training from uh, Tim Cochran with uh, Pioneer Risa. We'll also have training from uh, Mr. Darren Danner, uh, our one and only. And so again, that's February 27th. And we look forward to that day. And again, thank you, gentlemen, for always being uh, willing to get to the schools and also, you know, being willing to, to receive that training and receive it with open arms. So, again, thank you.
so that's why we started asking all the principals to be on the field because it is something that it's a process that starts day one and and we just need to be there when it ends and i'd just like to remind our community that we cannot educate our children without every person that's employed in the state county school system in this community so with that said i will hush and mr chair i make the recommendation to approve this presented uh, yes ma'am i will make that motion that we accept this uh date uh, for the 2024 graduation do i have a second second i have a motion and a second in discussion all in favor vote is unanimous Yes, this is for informative purposes. Uh, we will have our prom on uh, April 27th, and it will be a white path creek proms again, 8 to 11. Uh, all students and their guests who attend the prom will submit to a breathalyzer from our Fannie County Sheriff's Department before they enter, and then the event will conclude by 11, so the students will be able to abide by the Georgia teenage driving laws and everybody can get home safely, because we know they go straight home. <laughs> Dr. Gravy, thank you for that update. Mr. Chair, the next item on the agenda is to approve purchase of Chromebooks and Director of Technology and Cybersecurity, Scott Mathis. Good evening. Good evening, Ms. Miller and Ward. I come to you this evening to ask for the purchase of 87. HP Chromebooks, and those will be for our support staff, which is SROs, nutrition workers, nurses, parapros, everyone that supports the educational process. They already have a Chromebook that is obsolete, and so if we purchase these, they should last for five years. And if you scroll down, the quote is from SHI, in the amount of $31,350.45, and these will be purchased with SPLOS funds if approved. And what um, is the purpose of the Chromebook for the support staff? The Chromebook for the support staff is everything we do is online these days with Google Classroom, and Infinite Campus is our student information system. And they also make use of these. We had, I think, two or maybe three cold days already where they could take them home and continue to do their work uh, while they were at home. And so, and also our email, of course, is in the cloud. And so they use them uh, a lot more often than you would think they did. They use them a lot. And so they're, they are. Uh, very grateful to get these devices and uh, they use them, like I said, to support our teachers and our students. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to approve this presented. Do I have a motion to approve the purchase of the Chromebooks? So moved. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I'd like to say that uh, these things are, are pretty durable. You know, I have a 14-year-old with one, and, and uh, they they seem to be holding in there. And it's a discussion I have with uh, the other kids. It's not that my daughter's that rough on it, but I see some that are rough on them. But they hanging in there. They're, they're hanging in tough. We, so. we repair quite a few yeah. throughout, the, throughout the year. But they, they do well. Yes. All in favor? Vote is unanimous. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Chair, next time on the agenda is to approve Mount Education Center or MEC bus use request. Interim Director of Transportation, Chris Jerry will present the information. Good evening, Board. Madam Superintendent. Uh, we got a couple of bus requests from some of our community partners. The first one is uh, from the Mount Education Center, MEC. They are requesting bus for the following date, Monday, March 4th, 2024. Uh, they plan on going to the Gilmer uh, Mountain Education Center uh, in LJ. Uh, the pickup time will be 4.45 and return time will be approximately 7 p.m. And they will be responsible for the cost uh, of the fuel and drivers approved. Mr. Chairman, recommendations approved as presented. 
We have a recommendation. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion. Is there a second? We have a second. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Yeah, the second request is from Leadership Bannon, and they're requesting one of our uh, yellow buses, the full size bus, for the following day, Thursday, March 14, 2024. And they will be going to the Georgia Capitol in Atlanta uh, for the uh, Capitol Day there to be part of that. And they will like to leave at 6 a.m. and approximately return at 6 p.m. And they will also uh, be responsible for the cost of the fuel and driver for the do I have a motion to approve the leadership fan bus use request? I move. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Votes unanimous. Yes, ma'am. We have a recommendation. Is there a, a motion to move into executive session? I have a motion. Is there a second? Yes, you have a second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Unanimous. Folks will be right back.
May I have a motion to resume our uh, board meeting? So then. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? It's unanimous. No action was taken while in executive session. May I have a motion to approve the minutes from executive session on December 14th, 2023? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion is second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. The next two names on the list are resignations, and I'll take them with their dates um, together, and we'll take collective um, action if that's appropriate with you all. Um, first is Glenn Lewis, effective 2 1 2024. And the next is Mary Corbin, effective 5 31 2024. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Next recommendation is pending completion of paperwork, background check, and training requirements. And my first one is Ms. Hannah White for professional staff, effective 2 9 2024. Mr. Chair, make that recommendation. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Next four we'll take collectively unless there's an objection. These are all classified. All pending completion of paperwork, background check, and training requirements. All effective 2 12 2024. I'll make that motion. Well, let me read. Okay. Those. I'm sorry. Never mind. You have the personnel sheet in front of me. Yes, ma'am. So we have Mary Benjamin, Lisa Cheatham, Savannah Foster, and William Hayes. I make that recommendation. And I'll make the motion for those four classified personnel. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. All in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you. Next is recommendation of substitute employee pending completion of paperwork, background check, and training requirements. Um, Recommendation is Victoria Rinzi for substitute teacher effective 2 12 2024. Make that recommendation. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? It is unanimous. Next is for student work program and the completion of paperwork and all school program requirements. And that's Carly Holloway for clerical effective 2 9 2024. Mr. Chair, make that recommendation. Is there a recommendation from Ms. Carly Holloway? So moved. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you. And you all will open the next personnel sheet for um, renewal of contracts. The list is long, so in just a minute to look at it. The first one that we'll um, look at is the 2024-2025 administrative staff. I make the recommendation to take that list collectively when you're ready. I have a motion or a recommendation to accept these administrators for the 2024-25 school year. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Third. Motion and a second. All in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And the next list is all of our certified professional staff effective for the 2024-2025 school year. 
If you will take a minute just to review that list. We are ready. I will make that recommendation. There is a recommendation to accept professional staff effective 2024-25 school year. That list is before you. Do I have a motion? You have a motion. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you, sir. Next item on the agenda is superintendent comments. And Graduation date is one of my favorite days. Um, you see the little ones walk in. Some of them is pre-K with us now, or at least kindergarten, and they just um, get off the bus or out of the parents' cars with their little hands held up, and then we get to spend a big part of their golden years with them. And um, God's good, and that day is um, a blessing among blessed days. We just got back from a Gail conference. We were able to take our um, all of our principals and then Dr. Ruth, Dr. Huff, and Mr. Mathis and I went and um, we were actually presented with a vision award for our school system. It was nice to have the Southern Big winners with us tonight. They work hard and um, they did so well in the Southern B at the district level that we had here. Alice's presentation. Allison, I appreciate how you reflected and embodied the fact that school is more than academics. It is community. It is as family. And you mentioned PTO several times, parent-teacher organization, and we can't do it without partnering with our parents. So I commend you for that. Susan, thank you in your department for your hard work, and thank you for taking the time your time to do an explanation of the audit. Appreciate it. Um, the principals, elementary principals, went out of their way to have a Valentine's dance for the kids on February the 3rd. So there's something like a bunch of little kids having a Valentine's dance together to get you um, tickled. We have a birthday in the house tonight, Mr. Price. Happy birthday, sir. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Mr. Mathis found out some news today. I don't know if y'all remember from his presentation where he submitted the cyber security posters to the state. Well, he has a state winner. So um, Mr. Mathis is um, hopefully next month will be able to tell us even more, but Ms. Nora Todd of East Bend Elementary School won for the state level and has been invited to come to the State Board of Education um, on the 22nd, I believe, Mr. Mathis, to be um, recognized. So very excited about that. And Mr. Mathis was beyond himself. He called me. I didn't answer right away. And he <laughs> called me right back. And I thought, oh, Lord, something's burning down. But that wasn't it. It was actually good news. So it was, it was mm -hmm. We are fanning. Amen. I'd like to uh, congratulate Mr. Uh, Bobby Bearden on his vice chair. And with that, it's good to see him healthy in here. And uh, Bobby, I'm going to let you start out and work that way. All right. Great to be back. That's all I can tell you. I had to miss two meetings, and it was worse on me than it was on you. I assure you. When I took the Board of Education, my commitment was to be here. And out of 21 years, I think I might have missed five meetings. And it was on account of health problems, but I'm sure of them. Miss Danner, I can't say enough about this presentation. It was great. Financial department, I know I'm going to say this wrong, but I'm going to say it. In other words, everything that you did and they came up here and checked it, it checked out. That's the bottom line. And that's what it's all about. I'd like for you to know personally, thank you, and I'd like for you to tell your department 
from me to thank them for all the work that they did. This system right here could not operate with a lousy financial department. You can't do it. You got to have somebody that keeps tabs on all the things, all the money it's spent, and when it comes time, it's there. And that's an accomplishment. Uh, I did find out the other day, and I ain't going to tell you who told me, we're going to get to eat at Blue Ridge Elementary when we go on our trip to schools. Well, now, let me tell you this, and I told the person I was talking to, I have not ate any food at any of our schools that was bad. Our children are getting good food at our lunchroom. Uh, other than that, I'm just blessed to be here. I appreciate all the principals that are here, everybody else who is here, and uh, congratulations on being interim on our department of transportation. I think you'll do a great job. Uh, thank our SRO for being here. Our SROs do a great job in our school system and can't say enough about them. Mr. Brown.
It is an honor to sit up here, and I do appreciate it. I do want to say that I agree with everything that they said, Ms. Stanley and Ms. Wynn. What an accomplishment. Both of you have some great presentations. I appreciate all of this. I do. I may not show it enough a lot of times, but I do appreciate y'all. I'm sure you're doing a good job of asking for your first thing up here. You look like a pro, and I appreciate that you did well. For me, this time of year is a little different. I know Dr. Ruth will probably understand what I'm fixing to go with this. I do appreciate the opportunity that Mr. Ramsey and Ms. York and all them let me do. I get the privilege of being around our students and actually trying to help coach a little bit in track. Absolutely one of the best lessons that I ever get out of the year. I complain a little bit and grumble a lot about the time that it takes because it is hard for me to make the time to get there. But when I'm there, it is some of the best moments that I ever had. It was actually getting to interact with our students on a daily basis like that. So I want to take this time to thank you, Dr. Ramsey. If you ever pull that away from me, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'll just say it right away. Turn out state champions, you're going to keep that one. Well, thank you. No pressure. I appreciate that. And I also appreciate being able to work alongside of one of our great athletes and coaches, Mr. Ramsey. I don't know if I've ever seen that or ever heard of that in another system. But our kids truly do benefit from it, and I am very thankful for it. But I get to be a small part of that. I guess that's probably one of the best nuggets of being a board member, if there is anything that perks to it, is the fact that I get to be around those students. So with that, I want to say thank you. God bless you all. Y'all be safe. Well, Mr. Ramsey, I'm sure you have a lot of